I am Junk Dump, and today we're going to do camshaft timing on an Oldsmobile. But camshaft timing is pretty much going to be very similar on other V8 engines. And we use these cam timing specifications for various reasons. Firstly, you want to check these specifications to find out if your cam was grounded properly or even if you have the correct camshaft. Measuring cylinder 1 and then cylinder 8 will tell you if there's any twist or deviation between the whole camshaft. Also, these cam timing specifications are important for us to decide which kind of camshaft we want in our engines depending on how you use it. To begin, you're going to need an accurate way to find top dead center on cylinder 1. The most accurate way to make the measurements is by using a dial indicator. I suggest that you use a bar style holder for that and not this snake style. Um, the snake style tend to move around a bit. Now that the dial indicator is set up properly, we're going to install the camshaft timing wheel. Now the camshaft timing wheel actually measures the degrees of rotation in the crankshaft. You need an adjustable pointer, and for that I use a coat hanger wrapped around a bolt. Now that you're all set up, you need to find top dead center on the engine. Specifically, you want to note top dead center on the compression stroke, and that's denoted by both of your intake and exhaust lifters being down on the base circle of the cam. Here you'll notice the exhaust lifter is up on a lobe. And now you'll note the intake is up on a lobe as well. Here both lifters are off from the lobes and on that base circle, so we're headed up on our compression stroke. Now to find top dead center, all we have to do is rotate the engine, always rotating it in the direction noted here. You want to pay particularly close attention to the dial indicator and note when it's at its highest point. When the piston is at its maximum height, you'll notice the dial indicator pause for a second. Then all you have to do is adjust your pointer to the top dead center mark on the cam timing wheel. Now it's super important to rotate the engine fully and recheck. I do at least two or three more complete turns and make sure that that top dead center is still lining up and that the dial indicator truly is at its highest point while at top dead center. Always recheck and then readjust. For the next steps, you'll need something like a solid lifter. Now, not a lot of Oldsmobile guys have one of these sitting around, so here's a little trick to help you if you don't have a solid lifter. So what you want to do is remove the plunger and lifter body. Next you'll want to remove that plunger return spring from the bottom. Next reassemble the plunger and lifter body, and then invert that and place it back into the lifter. Make certain it's installed all the way, and now you have something that's going to function like a solid lifter for the purposes of measurement. Step two, you're going to install a solid lifter in the intake bore, and then set the dial indicator on it, and set it to zero. Here I'm installing that inverted lifter into the bore, and now that top dead center is already set, we can move the dial indicator, set it on that lifter, and set it to zero. Make certain that lifter is on the base circle, and then you can set that to zero. Now, especially if you're using a dial indicator holder like this style here, you're going to have to recheck and readjust that until you're certain that, it's at, that it returns to zero when on that base circle. Step three, we're gonna begin with our preliminary measurements. Now we're gonna rotate the engine to an intake lobe lift of 50 thousandths. And once the lifter begins to come up, you'll wanna keep an eye on your dial indicator and stop it when it comes to 50 thousandths. And now you can record the 50 thousandths intake opening event. 
That's recorded in degrees before top dead center, or BTDC. Right now, it's at 10 degrees. Step four, we're gonna further rotate the engine to the maximum intake lobe lift. Now this isn't to be confused with valve lift, this is the camshaft lift. Now for step five, we're gonna record the gross intake cam lift and the lobe center. The dial indicator will show you the gross intake cam lift and here it's 321 thousandths of an inch. Now I record the intake lobe center in total degrees past top dead center. So here it's 104 degrees. Now for step six, we're gonna keep rotating the engine until that intake lobe lowers to a lift of 50 thousandths. And now we're gonna record the 50 thousandths intake closing in degrees after top dead center. So here it's 40 degrees past top dead center. Now I'm not gonna show step seven, but you definitely need to rotate the engine and recheck those timing events. Make sure that they're accurate. If you get any variation on your readings, keep doing it until you figure out exactly what your timing events are. Step eight, we're gonna install or move the solid lifter over to the exhaust bore. Then we're gonna set the dial indicator again to zero on the base circle. Again, keep rotating through your engine and checking and rechecking and make sure that when it returns to zero, you're on your base circle. Now for step nine, we're gonna rotate the engine to an exhaust lobe lifting of 50 thousandths. Keep an eye on your dial indicator when the exhaust lobe starts to lift and stop it when it comes to 50 thousandths. And now we're gonna record the 50 thousandths exhaust opening in degrees before bottom dead center, BBDC. Here you can see it's 53 degrees before bottom dead center. Now for step 10, we're gonna rotate the engine to a maximum exhaust lobe lift. For step 11, we're gonna record the gross exhaust cam lift and the lobe center as well. Here, the gross exhaust cam lift is 327 thousandths of an inch. And here I record the exhaust lobe center in total degrees past top dead center. So here it's 248 degrees, and don't worry, that number may look wrong to you, but we're going to do some math on it later to come up with the actual lobe center. Step 12, we're going to continue rotating the engine to lower the exhaust lobe to a lift of 50 thousandths again. And watch your dial indicator, and when it comes back down to a total lift of 50 thousandths, you're in the right spot. Now we record the 50 thousandths exhaust closing in degrees after top dead center. And here it's 3 degrees. And now you want to rotate your engine, recheck those exhaust timing events. Next up, I'm going to show you how to get your stats and also the math used to find the numbers that you're looking for. At 50 thousandths intake opening, we have 10 degrees BTDC. The gross intake cam lift was 320 thousandths of an inch. The gross intake lobe center for the intake side was 104 degrees. And the 50 thousandths intake closing event after bottom dead center is 40 degrees. Now for the exhaust side, the 50 thousandths opening is 53 degrees before bottom dead center. The gross exhaust cam lift was 326 thousandths of an inch. The gross exhaust lobe center was found to be 248 degrees. And the 50 thousandths exhaust closing was at three degrees after top dead center. To get the gross intake valve lift, you need to take the gross intake cam lift, multiply that by the rocker ratio for an Oldsmobile 1.6, and then you get your valve lift of 0.512 inches. To get the exhaust valve lift, you'll wanna do the same. Take your gross cam lift times the rocker ratio, 1.6 again, and you get 522 thousandths of an inch. Next, you'll want your 50 thousandths intake duration. To find that, take your intake opening plus your intake closing plus 180 degrees, and that's gonna equal 230 degrees of intake duration. And we calculate the exhaust duration the same way. Take your 50 thousandths exhaust opening, your 50 thousandths exhaust closing, plus 180 degrees, and you'll get your 50 thousandths exhaust duration, which is 236 degrees. Now this one's simple. Your intake lobe center is exactly the same as your gross intake lobe center, so for this case, it was 104 degrees. Your exhaust lobe center is a little different. You'll need to take 360 degrees 
subtract the gross exhaust lobe center from that and then you'll get the actual exhaust lobe center as 112 degrees in this case. Next you'll want to find your lobe separation angle. This gives you an idea of how much overlap is in the cam. And you take your intake lobe center, your exhaust lobe center, add those together, divide the sum by 2, and then you get your lobe separation angle. And in this case it was 108 degrees. And that's how we find the cam timing specifications that are generally all given by the manufacturers of the cam shafts. These are the specifications that you typically get when looking up your camshafts. So now I've verified that our intake valve lift for this one was 512 thousandths of an inch. Our exhaust valve lift was 522 thousandths of an inch. The 50 thousandths intake duration was 230 degrees. The 50 thousandths exhaust duration was 236 degrees. Our intake lobe center was at 104 degrees. Our exhaust lobe center 112 degrees. And that gave us a lobe separation angle of 108 degrees. Once again, I am Junk Dump, and thanks for watching my V8 camshaft timing video. Again, we did this today on an Oldsmobile, but it's pretty much the same for any other V8 engine. Don't be afraid to leave your questions and comments. I try to respond to every single one of them. Thank you again for watching.